Hi all, in this video, we are going to learn how to use artificial neural networks for ODEs and PDEs. Now, usually we have seen uh, the use of artificial neural networks for supervised learning so far in this uh, course, uh, where you have a set of input data points and you have a set of corresponding output data points and you use ANN to learn the function that connects the input and the output. So essentially you have lots and lots of data using which you learn the weight parameters of the artificial neural networks. But now we are going to do something very very different because when you want to solve an ODE you do not have any a priori information about the input and the output. All that you have is a equation. So essentially here you have no data and only the equation. So this is a very different approach to the use of ANNs as compared to the regular supervised learning that we have been doing. The same method that we are going to describe here can be used for solving PDEs also, but we are going to focus on ODEs for the time being for the sake of simplicity. So let's take a ODE which is let's say dy by dx, so y is a function of x, is equal to minus 2xy. And since this is a first order ODE, you also need the initial conditions and so let's say that y at x equal to 0 is equal to 1. So this is a very simple ODE and you can actually solve it analytically. So if you do that, what do you do? You do dy by y is equal to minus 2x dx and then you can integrate both sides uh, to finally get y of x is equal to e power minus x square. And you can of course take a derivative of e power minus x square and convince yourself that you get minus 2x into y. So this is very very simple and straightforward but the problem is that this process of analytical solution works for only a very small subset of ODEs and PDEs and a very large subset of ODEs and PDEs actually is very very difficult to solve analytically and that is true for actually most problems of practical relevance you know they are too complicated to be solved analytically so usually what we do is that we make lots of assumptions we make lots of simplifications and then we finally solve the simplified version of the actual equation and that leads to uh, problems because that allows us to understand physical systems only up to a certain limitation or only within certain range of parameter values if you want to gain a deeper, better, broader understanding of physical systems, you need a method which can solve for the underlying ODEs and PDEs in a much more general manner without these unnecessary restrictions. So one approach that science has used so far with great success is what is called numerical simulation. So what is numerical simulation? So in numerical simulation what you do is that you say that okay I do not need a complete analytical expression for my output as a function of input but I rather want to estimate or approximate the values of the output at particular discrete points of the input values x. So let's say if x goes from 0 to 1 then I will discretize that space into 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and so on and estimate the values of my function at those discrete points using various kinds of numerical algorithms. Now a problem with numerical simulation is that first of all it doesn't necessarily work for all ODEs and PDEs because although the methods may be trivial uh, but the actual implementation leads to many practical problems that I am not going to go into. Uh, but the more important problem or limitation of numerical simulation is that uh, you know uh, for example the example that I gave that you take a range 
of x from 0 to 1 and you do a numerical simulation in that range, all that you get are the values of y for those specific discrete values. You know, so if you have done a simulation from 0 to 1 and now you want to estimate the value at x equal to 2, that is not going to work at all. Because you know, if you want to go to x equal to 2, you will have to again go from 1 to 1.1 to 1.2 to 1.3 and so on till you reach x equal to 2. So although the analytical and the numerical methods are very very useful, no doubt about it, but still they have some uh, limitations and it will be nice if we could transcend those limitations and do something that avoids the limitations of both these methods and here enters the artificial neural network. And the reason the artificial neural networks are a promising alternative to the analytical and the numerical methods is because of what is called the universal approximation theorem which I had also introduced to in an earlier video on artificial neural networks but here it is even more applicable because what it says is that no matter how complicated your ODE is the ANN in principle will be able to learn the functional relationship between X and Y. Now whether you can actually practically achieve that learning is a different point but at least in principle there is no limitation which prevents you from learning the function. So if you are able to let's say you know develop a nice gradient descent method or a you know some other simplifications then your process of finding the required function will become very very easy. So at least the nice thing is that the function exists and the ANN can learn that function which is a very very nice thing. So essentially now what we want to do is that let's assume that we do not know this solution. We only have this equation and now you want to solve this equation subject to this boundary conditions. So what do we do in ANN is that you have some kind of a ANN architecture which basically means layers and layers of nodes which are called hidden layers and finally we come to our output layer which gives you Y. So here you have an input which is X and you have an output which is Y and this is some artificial neural network that you are going to learn. So now how do you do that? So now as I mentioned at the beginning of the video that you know in, in the regular use of ANN for supervised learning you have lots and lots of data which is available to you. So usually what you do is that using the input data points and the model parameters you compute the hypothesis function and then compare that with the output for the given input which you already know. And now you try to train your network so that the difference between this hypothesis function and your actual output is minimized. But now the problem is that we do not have this y of x for the ODE. What we have is the actual ODE or the PDE but not this y of x. So the basic method of applying ANN for supervised learning does not work over here. So what we need to do is that we need to design a way to estimate our cost function that does not require knowledge of y of x. So h of x of theta you still know because uh, your x is known and the model is known so your hypothesis function gets determined by that but you do not have any y of x to compare yourself with. But what you know is that if you substitute this hypothesis function in your ODE you should get a certain answer and similarly this hypothesis function also needs to satisfy the given boundary conditions. So for this given problem that we have our hypothesis function should satisfy this 
equation so you replace y by h and your function should work and the hypothesis function also needs to satisfy this particular equation so now how do you do that so what you do is that so we have our equation which is now dh by dx plus 2xh so now this quantity must go to 0 as our h approaches the unknown y of x so this is one quantity that needs to be taken care of now if this quantity has to go to 0 what we can say is that the square of this has to be minimized so the reason we take a square is that whether this is now positive or negative does not matter once we take a square we only minimize because then this becomes a positive number so minimization of this quantity takes care of the ODE that we have because once this is satisfied once this is minimized then our ODE is satisfied to a very good approximation and the second condition is the boundary condition so there we have h of 0 comma theta minus 1 also has to become close to 0 so again we take a square over here and now this entire quantity becomes our cost function so now this is a simple but a very smart method to use ANNs for solving ODEs that even when you do not have any knowledge of the actual output function you can take the ODE with a square you can take the boundary conditions take a square add all of them and that becomes your cost function and now if you minimize your cost function then naturally this should become very close to zero and this should also become very close to zero so you need to keep an eye on your cost function as your weight parameters of your ann start getting updated now once you have done this you use your back propagation you use gradient descent you use all those other methods that you have developed for supervised learning so now here you may ask okay how do i compute this derivative because i i can easily compute my h if i know my artificial neural network uh, but computing these derivatives is again very very complicated so here there is a method which we are not going to look into any detail but just to tell you there is a method called automatic differentiations automatic differentiation or in short form it is called auto diff which is used to compute these derivatives so this method of taking derivatives is neither symbolic nor numerical when i say symbolic i refer to for example things that mathematica uses and when i refer to numerical derivatives it, it means you take a difference at two neighboring points you divide by the distance between those points in the limit of distance going to zero it converges to the derivative now both these methods are good but they have their own limitations and they definitely do not work for the case of artificial neural networks so here we use a different method called auto diff which is again implemented using available python packages now remember that there is a, another thing called auto grad which is a particular implementation of the automatic differentiation method so this automatic differentiation is partly symbolic partly numerical and it uses the advantages of both those methods so this is how you actually implement a uh, ann for solving ODEs and pds and a specific example with the architecture of the ann's is given in the description box so please do take a look and write your own code to simulate this and see for yourself how ann's can solve the ODEs and pds